Yeah, good afternoon and welcome ladies and gentlemen here at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries on Hannover Fair 2018. I invite you to come here, drink a coffee, um, have a seat and enjoy the next interview. My name is Falco Haag and I will lead you the next 20 minutes through our following talk and our interview partner will be Dr. Michael Kleszynski and he comes from Hexagon Composites, one globally le leading supplier of type 4 high pressure composite cylinders and also systems for storage and transport. And Michael Kleszynski previously held different management positions within production and engineering and has an extensive experience with design and man manufacturing of composites. And he is uh, now in charge of Hexagon's global hydrogen activities. And yeah, we will now, um, he will give, give us an outlook to new growth opportunities. So please welcome with me Michael Kleszynski. Have a yeah. seat. Hi, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, you in the audience, if you have any specific questions during our talk, just raise your hand and I will come down with the microphone to you. Yeah. All right. Um, last year in Hannover, you had recently announced the merger between Hexagon and Experion. How has the integration of the two businesses been? Yeah, indeed. It's already one year ago since I was sitting here with uh, Rick Rischilla and we announced joining of forces of two market leading companies in the field of um, composite high pressure containers. Um, as mergers are always a challenge, um, we had uh, a lot of emphasis on the integration process between these uh, two market leading companies and we spent a major part of uh, 2017 in order to uh, complete the integration between these companies. Of course we had a strong emphasis on synergies in this uh, kind of process and it was a real pleasure to see how these two groups formed uh, a global organization, so two groups that had been competing in the same arena for a very long uh, period of time. And it was really a pleasure to see um, how these group really, groups really added uh, value by bringing the mutual knowledge together. So I must say I'm very proud of all the achievements and especially the great efforts that have been taken during that process, um, especially in parallel to our daily business. We were at, at a growth year in 2017, especially the hydrogen business was growing. So parallel to that, that was really a great achievement. So I'm proud of that team. And also this is an important building block, this global organization uh, for all our future activities to support the growth of our hydrogen activities. Uh, it's, yeah, that sounds like a successful merging. Yeah, uh, we can really say that, is a, that was a great success. Mm -hmm. And hydrogen is an essential energy carrier within uh, the, uh, decarbonized energy systems. Yeah. Um, in how far do Hexagon's hydrogen activities contribute to uh, the transition towards a low carbon society now? Well, if you want to utilize uh, hydrogen as an energy carrier for the decarbonization, uh, you have to achieve uh, two things. You need to be able to store hydrogen and you need to be able to transport hydrogen. So we offer uh, solutions for, for broad, for let's say a big variety of applications in that field. We offer solutions for the storage of gaseous hydrogen. So solutions for storage, especially at high and ultra high pressures, so pressures up to 950 bar. We also offer solutions um, for the transport of hydrogen. Already by today, we are capable to transport 1000 kilograms of hydrogen on one vehicle on the road. This is best in class. And last but not least, of course, we offer solutions for the onboard storage um, of hydrogen to, to be used as fuel in future mobility applications. 
So there we talk about pressure containments, lightweight pressure containments, uh, with uh, operating pressures from 350 to 700 bar. All these solutions are based on our Type 4 lightweight uh, composite cylinder technology. Um, so these uh, solutions are all built around uh, these type of cylinders, so either to be used as cylinders or as uh, complete solutions like transport solutions. So actually we are, we are well connected along the whole, or we are addressing the whole value chain of hydrogen. So with onboard storage solutions for passenger cars, for transit buses, for heavy duty vehicles, just recently also for trains, so for the first fuel cell train that was uh, announced in two, or that was unveiled in 2016 from Alstom, we also supply the gas storage system, but also for hydrogen transport solutions that, is, that are used today for the transportation uh, of hydrogen for industrial applications. Furthermore, we also supply backup power solutions um, to be used, for example, for uh, power generation in remote locations to replace diesel generation, to replace by fuel cell power generation, and that to be driven by hydrogen. Yeah. I hear there is a, a lot of experience already in the company. It's great to hear. Yeah. Um, and now the rapid increase in interest uh, in various hydrogen applications could be now a growth potential for Hexagon. Uh, in which segments do you see the highest potential for your company in the next years? So we see a high gross potential in various fields of, um, uh, of hydrogen storage and transportation. Of course, the big gross potential is onboard storage of hydrogen. So uh, especially passenger cars are of uh, a big interest. Uh, so there we use uh, 700 bar storage systems. We need lightweight storage systems uh, in order to achieve the maximum uh, vehicle weight targets, but also we need 700 bar containment in order to store the amount of energy in these kind of vehicles. Uh, all OEMs, on, uh, all major and known OEMs are having programs uh, in order to launch fuel cell electrical vehicles, and we are part of uh, most of these programs, um, especially vehicles from the B and C class, so larger vehicles, long range mobility will be, will uh, enable a large cross potential for hydrogen uh, onboard storage for the future. In addition to that, uh, we also uh, have applications, the minute mobility increases, we also uh, need solutions for the fueling of these vehicles. So there we use uh, our high pressure and ultra high pressure storage cylinders that are essential part of the fueling infrastructure and hydrogen refueling stations. There especially the excellent fatigue uh, uh, properties of composites um, can add customer value. That's not about lightweight but about the fatigue of type 4 cylinders compared to type 1 cylinders and subsequently with increase of mobility there we also see a large gross potential for this field. And last but not least of course uh, fuel needs to come from the place of gener where, it's, uh, where it's generated to the place where it's consumed. So also the transport of uh, hydrogen as fuel in the future offers a big gross potential for this kind of applications. Okay, you, you now uh, several times mentioned uh, maximum pressure uh, vessels uh, yeah. in, in your strategy. Um, uh, I think also about uh, industrial um, hydrogen demand. Uh, do you think this is a growth opportunity to, to store hydrogen there or uh, is it another um, type of vessels or an, uh, another type of supply at the uh, industry? Yeah. So the uh, supply of industrial processes with hydrogen, and that's a very good point because hydrogen is used in a big variety of industrial processes. I mean from everything from steel to food processing everywhere is hydrogen. And uh, we already have introduced in 2016 the newest generation of 300 bar transport systems for the transport of hydrogen in industrial applications. Comparing these applications uh, or these solutions with the former uh, solutions that had been used, so 200 bar transport solution based on steel cylinders, we could increase the payload of these vehicles already by the factor of nearly five um, in order to, um, to improve uh, the transport of hydrogen for industrial use. And do you focus now on mobility? Well, we focus on not only on mobility, but <clears throat> also to also 
all mobility related applications, especially also as transport and distribution. Okay, thank you. Um, you recently announced that Hexagon joined the internationally recognized hydrogen council. Uh, what are your main objectives with, within this network? Yeah, we could uh, proudly announce in March of this year that we had been accepted as a supporting member in the Hydrogen Council. So being member of the Hydrogen Council uh, allows us to work even more closer with major industrial players that are also in the Council and have also founded the Council. It's part of our commitment to the Hydrogen Society of the future. So we also want to leverage our efforts uh, as part of the Council. So we, there are still a lot of tasks to be solved uh, towards work, towards the politics, but also works towards, um, towards the public, that hydrogen is recognized as that great uh, part in the chain for the decarbonization in the future. So this is also where we can leverage our efforts in a different way compared to the efforts that we can take standalone. Okay, and we have time for questions from the audience. Is there anyone who wants to join? Okay, I have still some questions <laughs> prepared. Um, the emerging hydrogen market uh, is now changing rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, and Hexagon, like all other global players, uh, is facing competition. How do you react on this fast market development? Well, first of all, we see this, uh, this growth and we, uh, we are facing growth short and long term everywhere in the dedicated areas we're focusing. We see that as a big chance. So in order also to exploit all chances that are upcoming, all short and long term opportunities, we are currently reinforcing um, our, uh, our team. We are heavily investing into the hydrogen dedicated uh, business area. So we're currently hiring. Uh, if you have drive, if you have integrity, if you really like this technology, if you want to be part of the success story, so please apply. And further to that, we're also investing in any kind of uh, R&D activities, also product development, but we're also extending our global footprint uh, in order to uh, be able to also accommodate the needs of the, the, uh, yeah, the future uh, hydrogen demands. We have organized our business with a dedicated, with a hydrogen dedicated business area with three business units focusing on um, mobility, so on automotive mobility, on distribution of hydrogen and on ground storage and off-highway applications like rail and marine. Uh, and I heard that your maximum uh, transport amount is 1,000 kilogram. Uh, and now you said uh, you do a lot of research and development. Yeah. Uh, can you give us an outlook maybe uh, what will come in the future? For example, how, uh, what do you think which uh, amount uh, will be able to transport in the next years? So we currently work on exactly that topic. Uh, so unfortunately, I cannot share this figure with you, but be prepared on our newest releases uh, regarding that and also the targets that we are following with these developments. <laughs> okay, so we stay tuned. Um, and uh, let's uh, look uh, on, the, on, on the range of your uh, company a little bit further. Uh, uh, because you serve both markets, uh, the CNG and hydrogen, and is there a, uh, any difference in requirements between the two gases, hydrogen and methane? Yes, so first of all, hydrogen, uh, sorry, uh, methane, so compressed natural gas, is also an excellent way towards decarbonization. Maybe a completely underestimated uh, fuel type already with fossil natural gas, we can reduce the carbon footprint by 20 to 30 percent. And with uh, natural gas based on biomethane, we even can be carbon neutral or carbon negative. So this is also a great opportunity towards decarbonization and also a large fuel field of our activities. We have uh, several hundred thousand natural gas uh, containers in the field in various applications, light duty vehicles, um, uh, but also heavy duty vehicles, buses, etc. And we are also expanding this business and also heavily working towards the legislation, towards the public uh, recognition of this fuel to also advocate for this very clean fuel natural gas. Uh, why was there a question? No. <laughs> Any questions up to this? Uh, I'm interested in the CNG a lot. Um, why do you think um, the share of CNG vehicles is so low in Germany? 
Well, uh, it mostly comes down to two things. So one major thing is, of course, the infrastructure. Even if we have in Germany 900 uh, natural gas fueling stations, uh, this is still considered not to be sufficient. This is why we also appreciate that uh, Volkswagen has taken the initiative to found the Industriekreis or Industrial Council to also work on that with a commitment to increase the fueling infra uh, infrastructure to 2,000 stations in Germany. And we are also part of these activities to work also towards public legislation, etc., uh, to facilitate these activities. And do you think uh, this uh, natural gas and uh, hydrogen will now hand by hand uh, together repress gasoline and diesel? Well, natural gas as well as hydrogen will take a much higher share in the future in the, uh, in the fuel mix of, uh, of all kind of alternative and renewable based fuels in the future. So there will be place for both technologies um, and we see a significant growth for both technologies for the future. Really interesting. Um, do you think uh, that uh, small fuel cell vehicles uh, will have a real potential at the moment for a mass market or what is necessary to reach this uh, market mat maturity? Well, we're still working on the technology to also further develop on the storage side. So the storage system is still also a significant share of the cost in a fuel cell vehicle. Um, therefore, there will be a certain market for this vehicle. Um, it will be challenging for very small vehicles, the so vehicle of the so-called A and uh, B class, to introduce this kind of technologies. But for vehicles from the C class and ranging on, we see a significant potential and share. All right, great. Um, yeah, I think uh, this was a uh, really uh, right range uh, about uh, the mobility sector and about uh, the, the growth opportunities now for the pressure vessels. Thank you very much for joining me here uh, for this interview. Thank you very much in the audience. And who is uh, interested in further talks can visit uh, Dr. Kleszynski at his booth number B60, which is uh, just there uh, in front of the information. Yeah, and I wish you a um, nice uh, uh, day. Um, yeah, thanks, Mr. Kleszynski. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>